citizens. Dark times have befallen our mighty nation. Whilst I, your supreme leader, Twitch Chong Yi, was off planet, partaking in the interstellar peace talks to secure our supply of galactic winning juice, the cowardly forces of T attacked en masse at the Cthulian Space Center. But they did not reckon on the strength of our resistance, and, despite losing their lives in the effort, the loyal Kerbals defended their homeland mighty against the aggressors, taking many with them into the oblivion of the afterlife. And further still, they have not reckoned on the righteous might of the responding blow. This day will go down forever in history. A black mark on all years to come, as the entire Clotholian nation rises up and takes what is ours! I have instructed my military advisors to spare nothing in the coming days. We will catch the loathsome sub kerbals before they can leave our lands, and we will exact our revenge. Hey guys, and welcome back to Kerbal Collaborative Warfare, the version of Kerbal Space Program where we have taken the multi bases of the Kerb Inside mod, the awesome armory of the BD Armory mod, and had war at each other like all good YouTubers should. We are here at Ben Bay today to celebrate the launch of a brand new craft. This craft not only is here to enact leaders' will, but also celebrates the fall of democracy in this world. I give to you the dear leader's glorious vessel, Boaty McBoatface. We'll talk more about McBoatface over there in a second, but first I want to talk to you about the Weeble Dalek, the craft that it was crunching its way over to get launched there. Uh, I've had extensive talks with Penguin about what constituents a uh, can turret and what does not and we have decided that this one can be redeployed as it still has all functioning weaponry in fact that is why there is a pile of debris on the hill over there Bodum at Boatface is of course our latest dreadnought design made for both attack and defense with 15 maverick missiles and 8 howitzer cannons to get on that attack front uh, that gives me an ideal sort of attack range from about 7 to 5 kilometers uh, any further and the missiles were short uh, full short and uh, any closer than five kilometers and they're going to start pummeling me with whatever they've got uh, it also carries Vulcan turrets and interceptor missiles. The Vulcan turrets are more for missile defense than anything, but those interceptors, they are very much anti-aircraft devices. My choices of launch site were relatively restricted. You can see here we went for Ben Bay, not only because it is the corporate, corporate stronghold of the whole of the Cthulian Empire, but also because it had this like really easy let down into the water. I could have also taken it from the KSC Island, you know, the one you see across the water from the Kerbal Space Center, or Cthulian Space Center as we call it in this game. <coughs> But the drop from that was quite extraordinary. I would have to go take the little ramp down uh, on the southern, no, western edge. And that is quite, quite steep. Uh, I ended up every time that I tried to launch from there, uh, taking the engines off the back of my craft. And as this wasn't a combat-induced failure, I thought it would be good to uh, take that back and launch it from Ben Bay. For our next set of magic tricks, the Eroquis actually managed to make it through an entire turn without getting blown up. Now, I really thought this wasn't going to be the case as, well, for several reasons. First off, this is our 14th turn of Collaborative Warfare, or my 14th turn of Collaborative Warfare anyway. And normally, any attack vessel that I put out there is being completely wiped out by the next turn. Uh, there are two exceptions to this which I'm not going to drop the names of in the video because I don't want to re remind people what's going on uh, the main one is the Eroquis that made it through so this has had a complete refit and is going off to harry the borders of tapes worlds again a habit I've been trying to get into, at least whilst not defending my own bases, is changing my BD Armoury team settings as I leave the border of Clothu. Because almost everything that I'm going to meet outside the border of Clothu is going to be an enemy. Uh, and it kind of just tells me what my hostility settings were out and about is. Because uh, there's a lot of vessels on the go, so I need to just have a, a quick and easy reminding system. And of course the team system is one of the best for that. A small 30 kilometer flight later, we find ourselves approaching the uh, the edge of the territorial protection on Taunt, or like tape ta tapes territories, as I like to call them. And you can see that hill in front of us. I have been making great use of that hill the entire time that I've been attacking either side. And we are going to do so again, not really for any tactical reasons, more just to, you know, I like that hill. Straight away, you can see that uh, a missile gets fired off. It is, in fact, my cruise missile. I wanted to save that 
for something else. But I was using guard mode here to protect me against the missiles because helicopters missiles are very hard to dodge. Uh, I like to let the computer do it for me. Well, not the dodging, the firing of the countermeasures. A uh, small side note on the firing of the countermeasures. They only seem to fire, or at least the AI only seems to fire it, when I am pointing my countermeasures towards the missiles. Now, whilst in a helicopter, that's not too difficult. That means you can, like, kind of angle your top half towards and stuff like that. But in a jet, I could see that being a little bit more tricky. Uh, so th this is something to bear in mind. But, of course, I used the guard mode so that I could get close enough to be able to put down on the side of the hill and be able to use my most favoured of tactics here. Uh, the reason it's most, my most favoured is I've not found any vessels so far that can actually counter this tactic. There will be a point at some point where I'm going to have to try and counter this tactic, so I have been thinking about how to do it, but until the other, uh, the other collaboratives, I, I don't know, what do, how do we refer to ourselves? There's a few of us, you know, like, uh, other, other groups have, have group names for themselves, I'm not sure what we could call ourselves. But yeah, until one of those people decide that they want to also use these howitzer cannons from a stationary point on top of a hill, I don't really have to figure out how to... Uh, counter it yet. Okay, so the main problem I'm having here is one of accuracy. I do have a shot on it, but trying to fire from a forward facing position from like five kilometers away, very difficult. So what you have to do is kind of swing your, your camera around, come zoom out as far as possible, and you can see I'm aiming at the flat cannon on the bottom right there. Uh, still, a very diff difficult proposition to uh, to pull off is get getting those hits. It took me a long time to line up, and even when I did, you could see it took four or five hits to actually manage to uh, blow up the bits that I wanted to blow up. I was mainly aiming for the gun on top because it wasn't quite as defended as the rest of the vessel, and with that hit, I'm going to slowly roll myself forwards. Well, we're not going to roll ourselves forwards. This is a heli tank, and we are going to use its heli capabilities to the max. To the maximum! Uh, I'm just going to have a small flight over there, plant down a flag, everyone's a winner. Except for Tape, he, he's the loser in this situation. With the victory of Edia's side concluded, I am going to come back to Boaty McBoatface, who has spent the majority of one day driving, driving, sailing, drifting, whichever one it is that it does, down the eastern coast of the northern Clothulian Peninsula, which we have previously defined as this bit of land. We then parked at 15 kilometers to the north of the Cthulian Space Center. Now, my original plan was to come driving in with both Boaty McBoatface and launch a plane from the KSC Island so that we could take on these two boats in a joint attack. There was one big problem with this, but it does prove the all-powerful nature of Dear Leader. I would like you to watch this purple dot. Boom! By Dear Leader's incredible mind powers, it spontaneously disappears. Now, this is something that I really did try and get around. I came in from different angles with different vehicles, uh, like just, just different all the time. I just kept on trying to get this working. But unfortunately, it just kept on spontaneously disappearing. I'm, I'm not sure what I can do about that. Well, in fact, I can't do anything about that. I really did try. But that leaves us on an attack pattern with the uh, illustrious over there, Cape, uh, Tapes Corvette. Capes Corvette? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Which must have been hanging around getting ideas from Agonarch's ship because uh, whilst I did throw some ordnance at it, I don't think there was even time for the ordnance to travel the distance. I don't think the bullets made the distance or any of the missiles that I fired made the distance before Tapes' ship also spontaneously erupted into bits. Um, and I wish I could say, yay, great, great going, we did the, the thing, but, like, both the ships just kind of beat themselves, and that's, that's not an mission that I really wanted to be proud of. And just as a small aside, this is, of course, why Kerbal Collaborative Warfare took me so long this time, because I tried to approach this in a manner that didn't mean everything just exploded. Unfortunately, guys, th this is what your ships do. Um, I'm not sure what we can do about that. I mean, to be honest, I know I don't test my ships when people are approaching it, so maybe my ship's going to explode as well. Uh, I know this ship did a lot of other funny things that I hadn't tested for. 
So now we have the fun job of trying to approach a pile of debris that I don't know whether is still active or not. We can spend some time going through all the different cycles, you know, where you press the square brackets to go through the different ships and see if any one of them has a weapon manager. But I thought instead of doing that, I might just cruise ever so slowly forwards whilst looking at this long range um long range view here the one that gives me the more accuracy on the firing of my guns and just go around trying to blow up some of the debris uh anything that's got either a probe core or a weapon manager i would have prioritized thankfully not a single piece of debris like that exists in amongst all this pile of stuff here it is literally just trash and debris then, of course, we need to start thinking about what we're going to do with that laser pod up on top of the VAB. Uh, I am mainly impressed that it's not actually opened fire at me yet. I think maybe Agonarch should set some sort of restricted range upon it, which would have been a very smart idea, as the laser can actually only effectively attack within a certain range. Obviously, the laser's power fades with distance. So, just to make sure it is actually a fully functional turret over there, I thought I would fire off some Maverick missiles. Now, this ship has a little bit of a design flaw uh, built within it. Uh, the Mavericks are facing 45 degrees left and right, which unfortunately means if I'm staring dead straight... Well, fortunately means if I'm staring dead straight, both can target upon. But if I am not 100% solidly looking at my target whichever one i am turned away from so if i'm slightly turned to the left my left hand uh, maverick will not get a fix turns out that's completely irrelevant anyway because agonarch's laser is more than capable enough to deal with a small volley of mavericks and i didn't want to waste all of them so i think i'm going to come back to my uh, howitzer abuse because it just is the best i'm still waiting for them to try and like ban it in kerbal uh Kerbal Congress or something like that. I, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll see what happens. Whilst lining myself up for attack, I thought we might have a bit of an issue uh, such as we had with the flat cannon where a few direct hits wouldn't be enough to take the weapon out. Turns out that was not the case. I was a little bit worried because there was all those structural uh, structural platforms uh, being used to make up the panels. Panels, that's the word I was looking for, not platforms. Uh, but it turns out first hit took out the laser. No real worry to, uh, no real reason to worry about it. I did send a few more volleys just to be sure though because I didn't quite notice the laser blow up on that first one. The next plan, of course, is to deal with the moth that we have on the other side of the space plane hangar. Uh, I'm going to deal with that by dragging Boaty McBoatface out of the water and going to place him over yonder on the dry land. I'm not sure exactly why I did this. My original intention was to actually leave him in the water as a defensive boat, much like Tape and Agonarch's uh, Corvette and whatever it was Agonarch had. Uh, but no, I, I didn't do that. I pulled that out. I moved it over to the space plane hangar, uh, mainly because it had a little surprise kept within. Uh, and that little surprise we will get into right now. Because Billy Bob V has gotten out of his command pod. We've been carrying him around since the since we launched him. And he's just been on the back of the boat with no real purpose. He's not there as a, a part of man crew or piloting. But he flies this tiny thing. It is, of course, my whirly gig. Uh, I don't really have a name for this tiny thing here. It's like the free energy uh, ultimate electronic helicopter tiny bod thing. It's basically got enough RTGs packed within that tiny little body that it has underneath there to power these three D scale, they are quite small scale uh, electric motors. Um, they only just have enough power to provide lift. I can go up, um, I can push my rotors hard enough to give me lift. But if we're in a positive lift scenario, we're draining just a little bit more energy than it takes to, to hold us up there. We can hover at a constant rate though. So once I get up to that height, I then reduce throttle a little bit and we just hover around. But I actually prefer using this vehicle as sort of a, uh, a propeller bladed buggy. As you can see here, uh, the, the blades are providing all the power. The rotors are providing all the power. The actual wheels there are only providing the stability. And the stability isn't great. As you can see, it kind of rocks around and rolls and, and jitters up and down. But I just kind of feel like that's a, a decent suspension 
But the reason I brought this out was I had noticed that the moth had a little bit of a blind spot on its rear end here, mainly due to these massive wings that Agonarch seems to enjoy putting on things. And once I've got within sort of 30, 40 meters of the thing, I'm like, right, well, there we go. That That's the thing. I'm going to get Agonarch's guys out now. Or rather, I'm going to roll to a stop first and make sure that I am totally safe and with that we're gonna get Billy Bob V out we're gonna run him over it was a long run just a little bit longer of a run than I would like so uh, whilst in the middle of doing that I was like you know what I'm just gonna get the guys out so Billy Bob V has a place to go we do of course uh, now take these as prisoners of war Agonarch if you would like your people back I am open to negotiation uh, I see you have um, a, a, a base at Bit Sandy. Bit Sandy would be very nice I, I would Take Bit Sandy in exchange for your two prisoners here. Uh, if if you would like to do that, of course, do let me know. But yeah, I, I am going to uh, steal steal your plane. Which is becoming a bit of a war cry for mine and Penguin's alliance. Uh, it, it just seems to be what we do quite well, going over and taking all of T's stuff. Uh, but here we go, Billy Bob is going to get inside, and finally we've managed to take the guard mode off. Now, every time I go around and have a look at things... Also, huh, look, he left us some drop pods to play with. They're going to be fun, but we'll go to that. Uh, every time I, I click around and do stuff, uh, uh, something fires at me. There's a little... Ping and I'm not sure what it is. I'm, I'm a little bit worried that it's Agonarch's uh, laser bay up on top. Uh, but if I had actually thought about it, um, for some somehow the little whirly gigger, the the tiny tiny helicopter thing, was still in control of my mouse. So when I clicked to do things, it fired at my mouse, which was most worrying and even now after the fact it's most worrying now that i know what it is uh it's still most worrying because i don't want my stuff firing things when i'm not technically in control and i was in control of billy bob and billy bob is the pilot not the machine oh well i was just talking about bit sandy and of course this ship has a bit of range to it uh i did take it up for an attempt at a suborbital insertion you know using it as a space plane the problem with that is there was no uh, oxidizer left there was, there was just a tiny tiny amount of oxidizer left that really wasn't enough to get me anywhere i can only assume that agonarch had used it coming over uh, towards us uh, i don't know he's not made his video yet so i'm not sure how to uh, double check that but obviously asking him would probably work, right? But anyway, enough of that. Once we have travelled across the top of the atmosphere for hundreds of kilometres, at least 200 kilometres, probably a little bit further, we find ourselves at Bit Sandy. Now, we are literally just coming in to the top of the atmosphere again. Uh, it took two uh, atmospheric hops, as I described them. It's basically a suborbital flight without firing those rockets at the top of your uh, top of your burn there uh, once again messing around with the whole guard mode situation here uh, I like to try and keep it not up uh, too high when I'm dealing with missiles but as I'm coming uh, sorry the guard range up too high when we're dealing with missiles but as we are coming in to attack just two vessels I decided to go for the full hog 10 kilometer range uh, this probably is going to mean that we're going to have a few weirdness going on with the the missiles but uh, whatever this is not my vessel uh, this is not my ship I don't I don't really care what happens to it at the end I, I probably would like to try and keep hold of it uh, because you know having extra material is always the best way to go all right so right now I'm trying to figure out when is the best place to loose these drop pods obviously we are at 12 kilometers up this is to buy myself a lot of a uh, lot of room if you remember when we were taking over the KSC island something like episode 7 I think maybe I don't know I'd have to double check that what episode number it was uh, I managed to drop the pods uh, ridiculously early then and this is not something that I have have um, corrected this is not a, a, a procedure I've corrected as you can see here uh, I'm now going around and setting up all the all the turrets to guard mode they will fire automatically on the way down and then I'm gonna reconfigure my ship or Agonarch's ship the moth version 3 version 4 version 5 I don't know what version we're on um, let the turrets fall down in front of me and try and set myself up for a nice attack run uh, dropping 
missiles all over the place. Uh, like, I put my nose down, and literally in seconds we were in combat. It's amazing how quickly you can plummet out of the sky when you've got engines pushing you down. Uh, the missiles are coming past me left, right, and all over the place. Everything seems to be going okay. I've turned down my... Uh, the timing on my guard mode because I wanted to try and take out these uh, missiles as quickly as possible uh, if we've got to wait like eight seconds between each re uh, re firing or re uh, e each scan interval if we've got to wait so long between each scan interval I could take out one missile and then another one will come and get me uh, but everything seemed to have gone all right actually all the missiles that I fired down kind of did okay did the things that they wanted to do uh, up until the the thing I was aiming at, the vehicle I was aiming at, got destroyed and then they all just kind of went off somewhere else. Also, the drop pods doing very, very well at throwing uh, throwing lead towards the, the different ships. You can see there, I've got a few things that I need to try and dodge, like the number of bullets coming at my missiles there was unbelievable, but... I think one of them managed to get through and make a small hit there. It's actually quite hard to figure out what's going on at this range, as I'm sure you can appreciate trying to watch it on the screen like this. Another problem that I had was that the um, the, the hive ship that Algonarch had had, the, the beehive, was hidden behind the flag. So whenever I tried to click for making, uh, for making target, it just wouldn't do it. I just uh, targeted the flag instead, which was a little bit annoying, but, you know, we, we can get over said things like that. Generally, with the judicious application of high explosives. Well, that's the way I like to deal with things. Okay, I kind of feel like everything is taken care of now. Uh, we're going to try and use the howitzer that Aganarch is very, <laughs> very kindly uh, supplied with his vessel here. A uh, little bit off. That That's always the way. And my um, drop pods, or Aganarch's drop pods, also ended up a little way off. This is good, though, because I've already taken over two bases, so I'm not allowed to take over Bit Sandy. I'm only allowed to come along and provide some harriment. Uh, so we're going to leave those drop pods there um, as a barricade, so Aganarch can't really take off again from here, or at least that's the hope. Uh, and now we're just trying to finish up everything that, that's here. Uh, if we could destroy everything, that would be the ideal one. I am super aware at how much fuel I don't have at this point. I'm also super aware at the fact that we just flew over 300 m meters above our targets and nothing opened fire at me. I'm, I'm now kind of trying to figure out what's going on. More importantly, how I could get the guard uh, mode to fire for me, because that... That thing is so much more accurate than I am, like so much more accurate. Uh, I tried doing a flyover upside down, which kind of worked. Got, got a few bullets fired off. Uh, and now these lazy circles are also kind of working. I was kind of hoping that it would fire a howitzer for me, but I think, if anything, the, um, the guard mode is less accurate than I am with the howitzer, which is a, a weird situation to find yourself in a computer being less able than you are okay so we're gonna go around for one last look and see what is going on but I do draw your attention to the fuel meters on the left of my screen there I had not clicked this at this point I am far too engaged in fighting and suddenly my engines die and I'm like oh this is not good this is not good at all so I see a bit of flat surface in front of me I'm not gonna make it back to the uh, to the airport the the uh, airstrip the concrete runway runway is the word I'm looking for so we're gonna try and put down nicely on this uh, little bit of grass here but Aganarch can't build it turns out none of his ships seem to put down nicely I came down very very gently very gently or at least I thought I came down very gently very gently from one of my craft but everyone kind of survived and most of the things were taken off so we're gonna take that as a success Right? Success. Yeah, maybe I have to come back and deal with these things. Okay, so now for my actual plane launch. Obviously the last one was taking over Aganarch's plane with a turret, in inverted commas. Today we have the Dear Lorder's glorious vessel, the Vengeance. This was obviously designed to go and strike back at the heart of the KSC, but obviously we had that whole exploding ship issue, which meant it was a little bit useless for that. Uh, it is kind of a medium range bomber slash interceptor. Uh, so it, it's built for the two jobs of being able to go over to Aganarch's land and really just like carpet bombing the place with all sorts of explosives. 
Uh, and secondly, for being able to catch up with any planes that happen to come under our way. Because obviously I want to kind of leave this in enemy territories with its guard mode and AI pilot on. So we can just kind of harry Aganarch before he actually does anything towards coming towards my people. You know, he has to deal with this before he comes and deals with the Cthulian state. The Vengeance is of course piloted by Jengila and Karela. We took her off from Jeb Island and flew hundreds of kilometers once again across the Kerb Atlantic to come to Bit Sandy because I thought this might be the place to come and like lay the smack down down. Uh, we it's been quite a thorn in my side having Bit Sandy being quite so close. It is of course as I say just across the Kerb Atlantic. If you look to our right we have another body of water off to our right. Uh, and that is the one that goes all the way over to Aganarch's land. So if we could just get him off of this little peninsula here, we will have um, quite, a, quite a large range advantage over him. And he won't be able to just launch whatever vessel he likes and just cross the water to get to us. I thought I would come in and practice my bombing runs because, you know, these, these vessels are a little bit... Um, dead, a little bit not not in use at the moment, and thus I reasoned that it would be the perfect time to work on the ranging because I don't know if you guys have noticed the carpet bombing is not the most accurate thing. We get a nice little targeting reticule, but uh, at whatever speed we're going, it either goes a little bit too long or a little bit too short. If we're going above sort of 200 meters per second, it goes long. If we go below 200 meters per second, it goes short. And at 200 meters per second, it could go either way. Who knows what's going on? Um, the main problem I had was actually keeping myself uh, lined up straight. Ignore those explosions on the rear end. It just took out uh, one of my air uh, intakes, which was nothing really to worry about. And those Mavericks that I just sent into oblivion because I'd gone too far over the top, yeah, don't, don't worry about those either. As you can see, my bombing runs really were not the height of technological excellence. I really could not get that, um, that shot down exact. And I was at this point going, well, do I want to push on to another base? Because uh, I will only be allowed to attack one more base. This is like the third base attack that I have made. Uh, and I was like, no, actually, we're going to put down the vengeance here. And we're going to attempt... To barricade Bit Sandy forever. As, as I say, we, we've got those uh, moth pods out there, and hopefully, if we put down this this plane on the runway, it should be able to provide ample deterrent for them being able to launch from here. Unfortunately, I was coming in far, far, far too hot. Uh, and hadn't even got my wheels down by halfway down the runway. So I was like, well, this isn't going to work. Let's go for a go around. Uh, fired up my engines. Flew right between the two targets. So neither of them have got like any life left in them whatsoever. Now I feel after the uh, travesty of the moth landing that maybe my name has been a little bit besmirched when it comes to being able to land these sort of semi-large craft. So we're going to leave this little bit of footage in here where I come down for an ever so gentle landing, uh, flying once again between the targets, making sure that there is no threat whatsoever. There does appear, well, it does sound like there is some engines running there, but that's fine. Little bit of a bounce on the landing, slamming our brakes, and realise that we have no steering control. So we're just going to sit halfway down this, uh, down this runway, just causing some trouble and making sure we can attack anything that launches. Alright, so we're starting to approach on half an hour here, so I will try and get through these next things relatively quickly. We, of course, need to put out another defensive turret. This is the Dear Leader's Glorious Profile. Uh, it's a little bit of a advancement upon the low profile that we put over at Kerman Lake. Uh, all that I've really done is add a little bit of armour to it to try and uh, counteract the whole how it's a challenge problem. Uh, might, might solve it, might not. There will be a uh, live stream coming up at some point where we're going to try and solve this issue, as well as the issue of missiles coming at planes before they're able to take off. I would like to solve that issue because I don't want it to be a rule that we can't fire at each other when they're on the ground. I want you to make a plane that's quick enough for getting up. But of course we need to prove that that is possible first. And of course the last thing to watch is the Iroquois moving back into the daylight on Kerbin so that we can take off and send him back to Black Crags, the holy uh, lands of Clefthu. We want to make sure that we are keeping our own land safe, but giving tape reasons to focus on other things rather than my land. So either side over there is obviously mine. I'm hoping that he'll go for that rather than like, you know, 
wasting his time trying to take out a base that's got loads of turrets and stuff on it. But we will, we will see. What I'm actually hoping is that he's uh, too wrapped up with Penguin to be able to do anything about me. Alright guys, well, with that I would like to say thank you very much for joining for this adventure. I will see you next time where we're going to continue the brave struggle of enacting leaders' will. This episode, obviously, as all episodes do, took an awful lot of time to put together. If you feel you can give back in any way, that would be massively appreciated. The number one way you can help is by sharing this uh, this episode out with all your friends just post it on your Facebook or Twitter feed and be like hey I really like this guys and of course if you feel you can go above and beyond I do have a Patreon account uh, patreon.com forward slash twitchy if you feel you can spare a monthly donation to help keep the quality of these videos up uh, any help is massively appreciated but anyway I will see you next time when we're going to take over the world bye Oh, and of course there's nukes.